Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Margarita, and if you're not new, hi, hello, and welcome back. And for today's video, I am doing a Spooktober video. You guys should be watching this on October 1st. Spooky season is here. Before I get into this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below what type of spooky videos you guys want to see. Don't come from my background. You know, it kind of gives it a little bit more um, an aesthetic because it's like red, blood, it's wrinkly. It could also look bad. I don't know. Before I even do any of this stuff, I am not a professional SFX makeup artist at all. Make sure you do a patch test. So, all right, before we get into this video, don't forget to grab yourself a drink. Look at how cute it is. And it's cafe. And the cup that puppy got me. And we have to be healthy on this channel. So I have some apples. Not only do I have apples, I have some peaches. I have some strawberries. So let me know what snacks you guys have and what drinks you're drinking. I can't stop eating these apples. They're so good. So the products that we are going to be needing to create this SFX look, you probably have them around your house. Not all of them, but if you do, that's pretty surprising. Um, tissue. You do need some face paint. You need some fake blood, some sort of face powder, a brush or a couple brushes, scissors and tweezers. We'll need staples for this look. You guys are probably like staples. I think that's it. I'm not too sure. Before we go ahead into the SFX, I'm gonna have a little snack break. So I'm having a Fiji apple. I cut it myself. For this SFX look, I am actually gonna go ahead and be using some tissues. This is just the Kleenex tissue. Oh, I'm such a dummy. Literally, how are we gonna create this entire thing if I don't have the main thing? Liquid latex. You need liquid latex. And this is actually just from Walmart. And then like a little trastecito, a bowl. Whatever you do, do not smell it. <laughs> okay, and then pour away. So what I'm gonna do with this tissue, I'm gonna go ahead and separate it to make it thinner. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is Tear it. I'm gonna start like tearing like thin pieces, kind of like not too thin, but not too thick. So I'm just gonna do that a couple of times. It's okay if you have a couple of thin layers, it's fine. <gasps> There's another layer. <gasps> I did not know that. The more you know about tissues, and you keep going and going and going and going. I literally keep forgetting all this stuff that I'm gonna need. You'll also wanna start off with bare face and then do your makeup afterwards because like, you wanna blend everything together. So I have the liquid latex right here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dip the brush into here and I'm gonna go ahead and start to have a line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side. Also, don't taste this. Do not taste it. I can tell you, it does not taste that good. And it was on accident if you're wondering how I tasted it. <laughs> These lines look like my wings uneven. Now we're taking our tissue string and I am gonna go ahead and just place it on top of here. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna press down and rip. And then I'm gonna do it on the other side. Line it up, press it in and rip. Now we're just going to repeat the steps over and put a little bit more liquid latex on top of it. This does take time to dry. Once again with the tissue string and you just repeat this process until you have like your desired like thickness if that's what you want to call it. Because like if you make it thin it's going to make it look as if it's like a, a shallow gash. So this is my third layer. But yeah, make sure you do not get this in like on the side of your hair, on your edges, on your baby hairs because <laughs> boy have I ripped out my hairs before. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and go on top of the tissue just a little bit. I'm gonna go on top of it. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to create like a smooth, I wanna make it like it blends in with my skin. All right, so I'm going back in with the fourth layer. Now, 
You do have to remember that these are thin. What type of spooky looks looks? What type of spooky looks do you want to see? Do you want to see like couple spooky looks? Cut looks. Why do I keep saying looks? But I do have an idea where Cameron and I could do like a little couple Halloween like little gore thing. Like a gory SFX, just kind of like a his and hers type of deal. If you have a boo thing. <laughs> Oh, get it, boo thing, because it's Halloween. I can't laugh because I need it to dry. And if I start to laugh, then like it could mess everything up. When you're doing your SFX stuff, you can't be like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna peel up because I talk a lot. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I'm just like my dad. We can talk and talk and talk and talk. What's the deal with Hispanic parents? We go to a friend's house or we go to a fiesta or a party or whatever. And then they're like, yeah, vamonos chamacos. Why is it that we're like, okay, go say bye. Like, okay, bye. Beso, mua, mua, que sea la otra, right? Why is it it takes like two hours to actually leave and that's maybe two hours like it's a oh let's progress out of the kitchen to the sala but somehow we're ended up in the backyard oh you can't forget about pastel or you know like well i don't know who leaves before cake i love cake i miss i miss this it just depends and then literally the kids would be on the ground just like when are we leaving What's the deal with that? Because when I say gordo ya, yeah, he's like, vamonos. And I'm like, let's go. I am going to do one more layer. So I'm doing the fifth layer. And then what I'm going to do, I have to let it dry. Ah, I put oh, baby hairs. I'm trying not to be loud because like Cameron is asleep. He's like, you feel good. And I'm like, well, if you weren't on that phone, nah, just kidding. This is the last layer I'm doing. So I believe it is five layers. And while I let this dry, I'm gonna eat my snacks. I am going to watch some Netflix. You could speed this up by using an air dryer, but uh, Cameron's asleep and air dryers are not quiet. I don't even really use air dryers. Bro dryers, blow dryers, air dryers. Did I just say an air dryer? I am questioning my brain right now. I, what did I just tell you? Do not sniff this because you are gonna end up like me. Tonto. As you're letting this dry, you can literally do your eye makeup. All right, guys, I will be back when this dries and I have to keep a uh, very still face. I have to be like this the entire time. I'm back. It took a full episode of Grey's Anatomy. Probably like about. So now that this is dry, we are getting into the fun part. But this next part is going to be a bit crucial. Either have a parent or be very very safe when you use sharp scissors okay what we're gonna do i am going to make like a cut incision right here you need to be very careful when you do this because i don't want you to cut your face i don't want to cut my face either these are actually nail scissors i think i'm gonna go ahead and slowly poke a hole i mean you don't really have to poke a hole you can just pick up that. You see how it picked it up? Like I did not stab it through. Now I can actually feel the skin right here, which that's good. Cause that means I am like towards the bottom. And then now I'm just gonna go ahead and start cutting all the way through. Okay, you can see that I have cut it. It does look like a small incision, but that's good because I'm not trying to make a big incision on my actual face. I did go ahead and finally cut through all of this right here and made like a little incision. I wanted to be very tedious, very careful when I cut this because not only is it my skin, I want the prosthetic to also look pretty good. We are gonna rough this part up, go ahead and lift this part up and then I'm gonna cut just the edge. You can see where it's at right here. I'm just cutting the edge and be very careful, very tedious, work slow. Another way I like to do the whole prosthetic, making it look very like, <clears throat> grab some tweezers and I like to tug at it. And then I just do this all around the prosthetic until I like what I see. So I go like back and forth with the scissors and the tweezers. So you can actually see that my prosthetic part is coming off right there because I am sweating and I'm gonna try not to pull it off even more. But so far, this is what we have. And I did end up taking like a chunk off of here. It was on accident. So my prosthetic is on the shiny side. So I am gonna go ahead and take some powder and I'm gonna go ahead and just dip my brush in it and then just go and put the powder on top of it because I wanna make it less shiny because it will make the prosthetic look more blended in, more better looking. 
don't use expensive powder. You can use like this powder, it's the Airspun. I got it from Walmart for about like five, six dollars. Okay, so I did end up priming my face. I used the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Obviously not like with this on, but I did put it around my face. And I'm going in with the ABH Luminous Foundation. And I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this all over my face and also on top of the prosthetic. So you see how when I said you need to have like that little thin layer so it blends in better and that this would be like the actual skin of it. You can see how well it is blended in with my skin. So pretty much I'm just going to go ahead and finish my face to like do my whole makeup look and everything. Alright, I am back. I literally feel like I don't look any different. I mean just a little bit. Okay, so now to get into the good part, I'm going into this Wet n Wild paint palette and I'm gonna go ahead and take this shade, the red burgundy shade, and I'm just taking a flat brush from Colourpop and this is from E3 and I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up the paint right here and then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to go ahead and start painting on the inside right up here right here oh ooh, that's looking so gross and then i'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit up here not too much but yeah look at that you want to make sure that you do get all up under here camera just woke up with like an eight hour nap six, six hour nap you don't have to be super clean about putting this red color in because it is going to end up getting like different dimensions in here. And plus like if you think about it, no wound is ever clean. And if it is, then I guess lucky but not lucky. So now I'm going to go ahead and take these two shades right here. And we're going to go ahead and make the wound, like the skin kind of look a little dirty. So we're literally just going to go back and forth on like the edges right here. And then if you see the color just fading out like right here, you can go ahead and fill it in again or like because we're going to add blood later. So it's not like a huge deal. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start doing a little bit of the bruising. I'm taking this yellow shade color. This is the shade Take Flight from Colourpop. And I'm just going to go ahead and just dab it all around. Oh, wow. All the sparkles. No sparkles powder. And we're just going to go ahead and start the bruising process. I'm just gonna go back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, oops, this purple and then this green and just start to put it on the skin edges just to get it that bruised effect. Yeah, you like this bruised effect going on. Play around with the colors purple, yellow. You can do a little bit of blue in there if you'd like, but just some bruised effects. Now that this is finished up, I'm grabbing a sponge and I'm grabbing tweezers and I'm actually just poking at it. And this is just like a disposable one, not like a good one. Don't use a good sponge. And I'm just trying to make it like into a stippling motion if you see that. You just poke at it. You don't, you want to go like all over. You want to go crazy. And then once you like what you have, you just stop there. That is what I have going on. Going back into the paint palette, picking up the red, browns, just all of that good stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and just stipple it all over my face right here. And then you can just get real messy with it. You can go ahead and put it across your lips too. The messier, the better. Also be careful because you don't want things like to be all blended into one thing. And so now that I have the desired look, I am going in with this fake blood. This is literally the only type of blood I have with me right now. Huh. Okay, that gives a good effect. So I'm just gonna go in and like spray it all in here. Okay, you can leave this step out. You can be done right here. It still looks good and spooky and scary. But I'm a little bit extra and I'm going to be adding staples into here. So I'm grabbing a little bit of the liquid latex. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start to stick them on to the wound or on the extra skin. You are probably going to have to hold it in place. So I'm going to have to hold this in place. So it's going to take a bit. All right, guys, so here is the finished look. Let me know if you like the staples in or the staples out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below. And let me know what you guys 
want to see next so i will see you guys in the next video